Hi folks, did you know that the USB-C port that Raspberry Pi uses for powering can also provide information about your power supply capabilities? For example, how much current it can provide. But it can also act in additional two roles. It can be either a host port to connect the fifth device without the need for USB splitter, or it can be programmed as a device. So your whole Raspberry Pi 5 behaves as a USB device. And this way you can connect it to any kind of other USB capable computer, for example, a classic PC, and you can share Raspberry Pi's resources like Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and Ethernet connection. However, before you can do it, you have to find an alternative way of powering your Raspberry Pi. You may try powering it from a classic PC USB 3.0 port. It can also handle data. I've tried it and I've barely managed to get Raspberry Pi 4B running by connecting it to a classic PC through a smartphone's power and data cable. But I was only able to connect a keyboard and a mouse. Anything else would cause the computer to store or reboot by itself. Providing adequate power to Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 is very important because otherwise it also depends on what program Raspberry Pi is executing. If you run Raspberry Pi OS for instance, it may work, but if you run Android, which needs more processing power, it would fail during booting. It is also interesting to note that even if Raspberry Pi does not fail, some external devices like hard disk may fail, though the only sustainable solution seems to be powering your Raspberry Pi through expansion port. Expansion port has 40 pins, of which two are 5 volt power supply pins and there are a number of ground pins. They are usually used to power Raspberry Pi heads. They can as well be used to power your Raspberry Pi. It doesn't really matter whether you power it through USB-C port or if you power it through expansion port. If you look at power over Ethernet head as an example, we can see that it actually powers your Raspberry Pi 5 the same way. I first used Raspberry Pi 3 to test this method to see if I can make an appropriate cable to be able to withstand a relatively high electric current without a significant voltage drop. I read many complaints over the internet forums where the authors complain about not being able to power Raspberry Pis through expansion port. But I've quickly realized that this was probably due to use of inappropriate cables. A cable that conducts 5 amperes of electric current must be much thicker than a cable that we use for Arduino projects, which is usually made for 1 ampere. The easiest way for me to get an appropriate thickness cable was to use one for household devices. It's able to conduct about 10 amperes. I decided to use it with USB Type-A connectors, which seem to have large enough contact surfaces. However, they are far from being perfect. If we closely observe classic PCs, motherboard, power connectors, we can see that they are much more robust. However, it is not difficult to solder a thick cable to USB Type-A connector pins if you use the highest soldering temperature setting about 450 degrees and if you do it quickly enough not to melt the plastics. Afterwards, it is important to fix the cable onto the connector. I've inserted the rear part of the connector and a part of the cable into a heat shrinking tube. I've headed the tube with an industrial fan to around 150 degrees Celsius. So it got tightly wrapped around the cable and around the rear part of the connector, which prevented any kind of cable movement and tearing off the contacts. Similarly, I've fixed two two pen headers on the other end of the cables and I also secured them with heat shrinking tube. This way power can be provided to Raspberry Pi 3, 4 or 5 through two pins of expansion port. I've tested this method and actually it works. One might think that it is not enough to connect just one pin for plus 5 volt and the other one for the ground. As a matter of fact I've tested it and it works because you only need a firm enough connection together with large enough surface, but the pins are not small. If you compare them to the cumulative size of the contacts on a USB-C connector, when you manage to successfully power your Raspberry Pi from expansion port, 
then your USB-C port is free. And the only thing that you have to do to be able to share your Raspberry Pi's capabilities with your classic PC or with even another Raspberry Pi is to connect a USB-C type cable. Basically, there are two kinds of cable. One has USB-C type connector from one side and USB-A type connector from the other. There are also cables that have USB-C connectors on both sides. It depends which computer you want to connect to. If you want to connect to another Raspberry Pi, then you would obviously need a cable that has USB-C connector from one side and USB type A connector from the other. I've used Android that I've installed on my Raspberry Pi 5 in my previous video to test Raspberry Pi 5's ability to share its Wi-Fi, Bluetooth or Ethernet connection and to transfer files. It's very simple. It's just like as if you had a smartphone connected to your classic PC. Everything works. And it even works with another Raspberry Pi. But of course, you have to keep in mind that you have to have a proper cable and that both devices have to be powered up. It is important to know that USB-C port on Raspberry Pi is not protected. This means that it is always powered, regardless what happens to Raspberry Pi. If this port is only used with your power supply, then there is no problem because your power supply provides power to it at the same time. But if you provide power to your Raspberry Pi through different means, then this port would always be powered, regardless of the state of your Raspberry Pi or the state of your computer that you are connecting to. So what is important here is maybe just for a precaution, it's not a bad idea to insert one kilo ohm resistor between power lines of the PC or another computer that you are connecting to and Raspberry Pi USB-C port. This would prevent any kind of high currents flowing between computers if the voltages of the ports are different. So if you turn off your PC or if you turn off your Raspberry Pi, then uh, there could be quite a large voltage difference. So what uh, if you want to use your USB-C port for hosting a device? No problem. You can do this, but in this case, you have to have a special cable. You can make it also yourself because you just need four pins, two to supply power and the other two for communication. So we have D plus, D minus, round and plus five watts. A precautionary measure is only needed if you are going to use self-powered devices. This means that these devices may not power down as your Raspberry Pi power down. It is not according to standard, but it may happen. So you can, as a precautionary measure, put one kilo ohm resistor as if you are having connection to your PC. To conclude our video, I would also like to mention that USB-C port is also special because it is connected directly to BCM2712 system on chip. This means that actually there is no intermediate microcontroller that would relay the data through USB-C port or something. This means that even if something bad happens to RP1 microcontroller, this port would still work. There is one more thing that I'd like to mention. If you are going to use your USB-C port to transfer data, then you have to alter your config.txt file configuration by adding dvc2 overlay and setting parameter dr mode to peripheral. This is preset in Consta KNG version of Android 14, so you don't have to do anything. But in Raspberry Pi OS, you have to add the line. And you also have to make sure that you have the latest version of BIOS, because otherwise this DVC2 overlay won't work. The other DR mode setting is host. Use this one if you want to host a USB device through the USB-C port. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Please press like and subscribe buttons if you've liked the video. The next video is coming soon. Bye.